what are the oral medications available to treat type 2 diabetes? Yeah, that's a really interesting question, Dr. Mirza. Um, 20 years ago, if you had asked this question, we would only have one answer. At that time, there was only one drug, and then there was insulin. Um, now, though, uh, within the last 10 to 15 years, they have developed about seven different classes of oral drugs, and each one has a unique character that mitigates the systemic dysfunction that we see that leads to high blood sugar levels. Because they are all unique, they can be used synergistically to affect uh, particularly when aggressive blood sugar lowering is required. The right choice of medications depends on many risk factors, and that includes the cost, the tolerance and side effect of medications, how potent you need a drug to be, and other beneficial aspects of the medications uh, or side effects of medications uh, that occur besides the blood sugar lowering effect. Um, I'm going to go over a few of the major classes and describe how they work. Uh, first of all, the first class of drugs uh, are called secretagogues. Um, they were discovered first. They were called sulfonylureas. Um, they had basically, as they, the name suggests, they enhance the secretion of insulin from the pancreas. And that is, uh, they work pretty powerfully at first, and they quickly can have a, um, a, an immediate effect. However, the side effect is that they often can lead to weight gain and blood sugars that become too low, what we call hypoglycemia. And therefore, the, their effect also declines over time because the um, effect of the pancreas function declines over time. So that drugs seem to lose effect um, with, uh, with uh, many years after the diagnosis of diabetes. Uh, the next class is uh, a class called biguanids, which is the, actually the second class that was discovered. There's only one member of this class. It's called metformin typically suggested that the, uh, most people who are diabetic start first. It's, um, it works by sensitizing the liver to insulin. And since the liver is, uh, becomes more sensitive to insulin, it reduces the amount of sugar that is released. The liver uh, typically puts out sugar in um, normal patients during fasting states so the blood sugar doesn't go low, but in diabetics, um, they put out an excess amount of sugar. So metformin reduces that and therefore reduces the workload of the pancreas as well. The side effect of this class, however, is typically diarrhea and bloating. Um, but however, there is no weight gain as seen in other medications. An even more powerful class of insulin sensitizers are called TZDs. Um, as the biguanids affect the sensitivity of insulin at the liver, uh, the TZDs are considered more powerful class of sensitizers that it not only sensitizes the liver, but also fat cells, and muscle cells, which is the most important organs that uh, take up sugar after a meal. Uh, these class include medications such as pioglitazone and rosiglitazone. Um, they typically take a while to start working, and the uh, effect of blood sugars is pretty durable. Um, however, there are some unwanted side effects of this class, including weight gain and swelling, and other rare side effects that are potentially linked to this drug. Thank you, Dr. Pham. Please tell us more about the new drug class, SGLT2 inhibitors, that recently came out? Um, that's the newest class of oral agents called sodium glucose transporter 2 inhibitors. They have a very unique mechanism of action and then the fact that they lower blood sugars in an insulin-dependent manner, meaning that they don't require insulin to lower blood sugar. They work by trying to offload a lot of uh, sugar from the blood into the urine. Um, this has other potential good or bad side effects, including a large amount of uh, urination and therefore a blood pressure lowering effect. And there's also some minimal weight loss because of that offloading of sugar. The side effects of this uh, class may include potential dehydration, genital yeast infections, and particularly those who are prone to them. Another new class of medications include the dipeptidyl peptidase 4 inhibitors. Um, this is a drug class which increases circulation of, of hormones that are normally produced by the gut, which feed back and enhance insulin secretion and suppress the uh, output of sugar by the liver in a glucose-dependent fashion, meaning that they only enhance the blood sugar lowering when the blood sugars are high and therefore have less low blood sugar effects that we see in medications such as secretagogues. These drugs have very little side effects and does not cause weight gain, but they're considered moderately effective in blood sugar lowering. Beyond oral medications, there are injectable medications uh, that aren't insulin that sometimes are used, and they're typically the most powerful drugs 
that are non-insulin related, uh, such as the GLP-1 agonist. They are injectable medicines and a version of the gut hormone, which we use to aid in reducing hunger, increasing insulin secretion, and decreasing liver output. Um, they slow down the emptying of the stomach, and versions of these drugs include uh, members called liraglutide and exenatide. Uh, they're considered the most powerful non-insulin medications. Some responders have a very significant amount of weight loss. Um, the side effect profile of them can include diarrhea with, constip uh, with occasional constipation, nausea, and vomiting. They typically are more um, expensive than the other medications. But as of note, all drug classes uh, that we had discussed earlier are used in combination with diet and exercise. The more the aggressive the blood sugar lowering you have, particularly uh, at the beginning, um, allows you to have a more durable life of your pancreas, which may halt the progression of the complications of diabetes.